What up everybody, it's your boy Jester James here, coming at you with another YouTube video. And in this video, we're going to be partnering with our blog post here, dissecting packets on the bite level. So if you, you weren't watching a, a, a couple videos ago, we did get into PCAP a little bit. We were able to look into some network forensics, loaded a, a data file into Wireshark, a PCAP file. We were able to look into some network data. However, I want to take us on a, a deeper dive there to really understand what's going on, especially on the bite level. So we're going to be going into the, the as deep into the weeds as you can potentially go here when we're looking at network data. And this will be very useful for y'all who are going to become network administrators or, or you're going to be IR analysts. You're going to be doing some network forensics and things along those lines. So we're going to be getting as deep down into the level as we can into, into looking at our network data here. So here's a blog post right here. We're going to be looking into UDP packets, TCP packets, and IP packets. And what we're actually going to be looking at specifically are those headers. So the packet headers. And if you're not really following what I'm getting at, let me detail and show you what we are actually going to be looking at here. IRL. So right off the bat here, I do have some a little bit of a, a real quick PCAP that I did just do here right now. So right off the bat, you can go, we've got a UDP packet here. Uh, the protocol here specified in, in Wireshark is UDP. So if we look into it here, here is a UDP packet header being attached into the overall packet. So you can see multiple different headers that this packet is being thrown onto. But for the UDP specifically, in our relation to our blog post here, we have the bits here that specifically sp specify the UDP packet header. And we have visuals here for each of the specific packet headers. And I'm going to be detailing this headers. However, I just wanted to give that parallel to the IRL, what you would actually be looking at here from a Wireshark perspective. So exactly like the packet header in the blog post details, it says source port, destination port, checksum, things along those lines, and they're exactly detailed here. You even got length there. Length is 612 in this specific case. And we're going to go and uh, we'll break that down for the for TCP and, and I don't think I have an IP packet in here, but we'll go into TCP at that point. So right off the bat, so UDP is the user packet protocol, user data packet protocol. So at that point, right, if you're not familiar into the, the previous videos that I'd done, so UDP stands for user datagram protocol. And basically UDP is a communications protocol that is primarily used to establish low latency, loss tolerant connections, and you'll we'll break that down a little bit more. So right off the bat, right, UDP requires no verification that a message has been received. It doesn't leverage that three-way handshake that TCP does, and there's no flow control or error recovery. Basically, UDP yeets the data forward, doesn't ask for any receive or any confirmation or receipt, but it goes in that, that straight direction there. And those UDP packets contain those four fields of source and destination port, length, and the checksum. So when you're looking at the UDP header, the total is 64 bits. And the reason why I'm going and really detailing on that, that byte and bit level is for you all to really understand and, and, and understand and wrap around your heads what exactly you're looking at. Because when I was first learning and, and getting to understand this, it's, it's very fascinating, right? Because we're literally at the, the bottom level to the point in which you're only a few steps away from looking at binary data, folks. So when you, when you started out in your, in your fields, wherever you're like, you're watching this video, you're obviously watching it to understand a little bit of, of network data here. But we're literally looking at it at such a low level that we're literally a few steps away from binary. So when people think about understanding computers, understanding computer networks, we're literally doing it from such a low level that we're building our, our knowledge from the bottom up to the point in which it's, it's great context to know. And if I appreciate that knowledge because it really gives you a feel for understanding networking and computers from that inside out perspective and and you really don't lose anything at this point here because of the fact that you you understand it 
from that ground up perspective. But that's just me expressing a little bit of the fire there, that passion when, in my mind when we're going over this stuff. And it is definitely a little bit, uh, it's pretty dry. However, when you think about it in that same perspective, it's, it's definitely very enlightening and, and fascinating. But UDP, right, it's very simple protocol. It's connectionless because it doesn't wait for a connection. Like I said, it just yeets the data. And it's quote unquote an unreliable protocol. And the reason why that is, is simply because it eats the data, right? But with that in mind, it makes sense why UDP is the transport protocol for things like DNS, right? Domain name systems. So when you're attributing and you're matching uh, MAC addresses and IP addresses, and if you're not familiar with those concepts, feel free to go back and watch a previous video that I made about network protocols and such. I'll put that link in the description. And it also, right, UDP uses SNMP and TFTP as well. Those are a couple of other protocols, but UDP is used in a lot of other protocols. But right off the bat, you know, we can break that down. And you can see, as simple as it is, it's simple 64 bits. And UDP is part of that foundation. Next up, we're going to be going into TCP. And then TCP goes into IP as well, or IP goes into TCP. So... So basically, we're, we're seeing the, the fundamental building blocks of networking architecture here. And again, I'll go back to that Wireshark capture, right? So this is exactly what we're talking about here. We've got the source port, destination point, length, and checksum. So that's that UDP header here that we're talking about in this instance. And it's if, you, if you're not putting those two and two together here, we're literally looking at data going across the wire. So you're looking so far into the weeds that you're seeing exactly the the deep dive that a lot of folks really aren't getting into as frequently as they ought to. So going forward now, we're going to get into TCP. So TCP is a lot more connection oriented, provides full duplex, so it's going point to point to both endpoints and the connections. It's leveraging that TCP handshake that we've talked about in previous videos. So that handshake is that SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, right? So you send the data, you acknowledge that data was getting sent, and then there's the acknowledgement of that's it, data's been sent, and we're done. And we're, or we're ready to continue. So there's that verification process. So TCP supports multiple upper layer conversations, so you can have multiple streams going. It's got reliable delivery because it's got sequence numbers. So if data gets sent and it gets out of order, TCP will transmit and it'll get it in co the correct order. Furthermore, TCP has got that flow control. So if data has to bu buffer because on the receiver's end there's a slow network connection going on or anything like that, TCP can adapt, which is really nice. And furthermore, TCP monitors the exchange of packets to estimate. So it has that TTL component to really understand when the connection needs to be retransmitted. So if the TCP packet's gone and it hasn't received that ACK in enough time, it'll retransmit, which is a really cool feature as well. Furthermore, you've got those basics in there, source and destination port. You've got sequence number, like we were saying, to identify what part of the data stream that packet will be. The acknowledgement number, so it's the sequence number to be expected by the sender when at the ACK is going to be sent. You've got the header length, the data offset field, so how many 32-bit options are contained in that TCP header. And it's important to note the header length and options field have variable length, as you can have multiple options, and you can have the header length change in instances because, again, it does adapt as going. There's that reserved field. And these bits are always set to zero. Comes into play for future use in the network transmissions. Like I was mentioning, we've got flags. So there's that ACK. There's the reset flag in, in the essence to which the connection needs to get reset. There's those SYN flags. And these are the flags that are being leverages in those TCP handshakes, right? Furthermore, we've got the window field. So how much space is available. And that some of these, as you can tell, most of these are matching up with exactly like where we were talking about in terms of being flow control. We've got the urgent pointer field, so that indicates if, if a data byte is, is urgent and the first point in that data to be consumed there. And then you've got the TCP options. 
there's multiple different options, but the biggest one that really comes into mind is that MSS, maximum segment side option, that's being used to determine that maximum segment size for transmissions, in instance, whether or not to fragment or not. Now you've got the data, right? So that's the data from those upper layer protocols that are being leveraged in TCP. And for all that, if you're not familiar with the different layers of the, the TCP IP or OSI models, again, link in the description of that video. But that is a little bit prerequisite here because that is going from the top and we're at the bottom here. So as you can tell, right, compared to UDP, there is a lot more bits here. There's a lot more features here. And we can get into that Wireshark here to kind of look into a TCP header. So you can see here, like we we're saying, TCP, source port, destination port, you got that sequence number here, acknowledgement number as well. And you've got some flags here. In this instance, the ACK flag is being used there. So you see the other options are saying not set. However, that acknowledgement has a one in there, so it's set. And again, we're looking here, we're looking, we're so knee deep into our, our analysis here that we're looking at bits and bytes to the extent in which it could be potentially classified as binary. You can see that right now what we're looking at here is hexadecimal. So we are basically as deep as you can potentially go. We've got that window size check some status and and there you go so again the reason why i popped open wireshark and i wanted to show you all this is is to just make sure you all understand that we're not just looking here at these these visuals and it's completely theoretical now this is being applied irl you pop open wireshark this is exactly what you're seeing and to wrap this video up we're going to go over ip as well so the ip header this is a big one where the extra it's going to be an extra header on top of the details attached by whether it be TCP or UDP. And as you can tell, right, it's the IP header. So this is where you're going to get your IP addresses, your packet length, packet sequence order. And the IP header has version, right? So whether it be IPv4 or IPv6. And for those of y'all aren't, who aren't familiar with that, IPv4 is the OG internet protocol, and IPv6 was introduced because of the fact that we actually ran out of addressing space, and now IPv6 utilizes alphanumeric characters as well. So instead of just using numbers like 192.168, IPv6 goes a step further to go and use letters like ABCD all the way up to the Z and things along those lines. Furthermore, you can see some of these, these uh, packet fields, right, these header fields, they repeat. So you've gonna, you're going to see some of these repetitive fields here. You're going to see IP header length. So how many 32-bit widths, so how many 32-bit words are in the IP header? And if you haven't caught on right there, we're working in bits and binary. So everything has to be in that same format of, of being even and things along those lines. We're going to see type of service, right? So the upper layer protocol that wants that packet to be handled. You're going to see total length, so the length of the entire IP packet, including the data and the header. You're going to see the identification, so an integer that identifies the current packet should a stream get frag fragmented. So where in the conversation does this specific packet basically belong? You're going to see flags, flags that really control whether that packet's allowed to be fr fragmented, and if so, what part and, and are, are what for the receiver to put it back together. You're going to see that TTL component mentioned earlier. So we're going to keep packets from looping endlessly, right? So how long does this packet have to, to live in essence before it gets retransmitted? Or the packet is in, in the essence of the packet, right? It's going to get dropped. So the protocol field as well. What upper layer protocol receives the, the packet after IP is processing is complete? And you got to remember, right, IP is being used to for that addressing scheme, being able to understand and I identify who's who on the network and then exactly like mentioned before you're seeing those repeated fields again the checksum source address destination address sometimes you have some options in your ip packets as well a big one being security then you've got the data field right the data for that packet and on that instance right i just want to give you all a little bit more of a vocal background and also pull up that wireshark to compare for y'all in, in consuming this blog post 
But this is really knee deep level. And this is us just talking about dissecting packets on the bite level to the extent in which you'll be able to understand what you're seeing when you're actually going into Wireshark in, in, in a more of a, a basic, more rudimentary concept than when we were looking at it on that, on that PCAT file for that Rick and Morty case. So if you find this valuable, please like and comment, subscribe, and always down for y'all to give us some ideas, updates, constructive criticism, all that jazz. Feel free to leave a comment, and you all can reach me on Jester James, jamescanth.com, right? You can go hit us up on that contact form. You can reach me at Jester James with threes on Twitter, and y'all know where we're at. So I hope you enjoyed that video, found it valuable. We'll catch y'all later.